Nigel Farage, the leader of the Brexit Party, is live on LBC. Welcome to the programme. How's your day? Eddie, it's been fine. Big decision to make, but I've made it, and I think it was the right thing to do. You said Boris Johnson's deal was not Brexit. You're now asking people in 317 constituencies to vote for a Brexit deal that's not Brexit. How do you feel about that? Well, last night he said two very important things. The first thing that he said was, we will absolutely leave by the end of 2020. Yes, I know what you're going to say. He said, do or die, die in a ditch, I'd leave by the 31st of October. But he said it unequivocally and clearly as part of a general election campaign. But the second thing that he said that was much more significant is he said, we will negotiate a free trade deal along the lines of a super super Canada plus and not accept political alignment. Now, when I heard that, I thought that means we're going to have to make some changes to the deal in terms of the clauses that are there in the political declaration. And that is actually beginning to take us, if he stays true to his word, taking us towards something that does now at last resemble Brexit. Uh, Is his deal Brexit or not? If he amends the deal in the way that he said last night, then we are heading firmly in the right direction. But it's not Brexit, is it, in your view? Uh, as it stands at the moment, no. So you're saying to people last... in 317 constituencies, uh, we're withdrawing, if you want Brexit, vote for this party that's not going to promise Brexit with well, this deal. Well, I'm saying if the Prime Minister keeps to his promise, and it was a massive change of direction, in fact, well, when Mrs May gave her speech in Florence, she said, we're going for a close political partnership. Boris last night said there would be no political alignment. If he's true to his word, then the deal gets amended, and it is something like Brexit. Isn't the, the reality that your, your conversion at last night is, is just a fig leaf, if I may say so, to explain away uh, changing a policy which many people told you last week you should have changed? Oh, look, you know, I was perfectly prepared to fight 600 seats. However... Well, I you personally weren't prepared to fight one, were you? Well, I was going to lead the party in 600. Um, and, you know, on the one hand, you've got my sheer unhappiness with the so-called deal, the new EU treaty, but on the other, the increasing realisation that in parts of London, southern England, and indeed the southwest of England particularly, the result of our standing would have been a lot of Liberal Democrats getting elected. And I began to think, if me standing up for principle led to (laughs) an alliance in Parliament that forced a second referendum upon us with Mm. all the misery... People were telling you this last week, though, Nigel Farage, and you ignored them. Uh, I ignored them because, at that stage, the Prime Minister had not moved position. Well, he hasn't, he hasn't moved position either. He's, he's, he's made a suggestion about what might happen in future. But the Brexit deal you despise is now the Brexit deal you're asking people in 317 constituencies to vote for. No, I'm not, because the Prime Minister said last night we are changing direction. And that was the reason, in the end, the decision became quite easy. Haven't you been outplayed and outclassed by Boris Johnson? No, I think I've outplayed and outclassed the Conservative Party, who, uh, under Mrs May, were taking us into a horrible cul-de-sac that could never have resembled Brexit at all. The Brexit Party winning the European elections reset the political agenda. We have a new Prime Minister who, whilst I was not happy with his deal, made some big changes to his position last night. Now, look, I know that what gets promised and what gets delivered can be two different things. Well, look at you last week and this week. I fully accept that. Well, what do you mean? Well, look at what you promised last week and look at what you're delivering now. Well, what I promised last week... 600 is candidates. Make sure is that we... Well, I could have still done 600 candidates and if Boris Johnson had not said what he said last night, I would have done. Uh, Wayne Bailey, who until lunchtime was your candidate in Crawley, a uh, Conservative-held seat, tweeted today, F your election strategy and F Boris. Very disappointed to see Nigel bottle it and back the EU treaty agreed by Boris. Uh, have you bottled it? I, well, I do not back the EU, the EU treaty of, and, and political declaration as backed by Boris. Of course, you're I don't asking back people it. to vote for it in 317 and constituencies. Would, and I would, and do you know what? If it comes before the European Parliament unamended, I would vote against it, be in no doubt. But you want people to that. vote for it in 317 constituencies? No, I don't. I want people to vote for Boris's pledge last night that says ah. he is going to change it in two fundamentally important areas. And what we now have to do is to make sure he keeps that promise, which is why
why we will turn the Brexit Party's fire onto Labour constituencies, 140 of which have never had Conservative MPs and uh, now have a Labour Party uh, who have broken their promises to them. They will leave constituencies now being represented by Remainer MPs. And if we can get enough people into Parliament on that ticket, we will keep Boris honest to his pledge. Uh, how will you keep him honest? Um, you think he's dishonest? I think that a lot of people in career politics say things in elections to get elected uh, and then sometimes change tack or position. Uh, I want to make sure that what he said last night, he sticks to. How? And if he does... How do you do it? Does, well, it's very easy, isn't it? Because if if we have a Brexit party sitting in Parliament and a Prime Minister that breaks those pledges, he knows he will bleed votes in a very large and very quick way to the Brexit party. It's a great way... Well, in, a, in a future election in five years' time? It's a great way of keeping him honest. Um, you've not explained how you're going to keep him honest, though, but the threat of maybe winning an election in five years' time. British politics is at a state now where trust is very, very low, and people can... Uh, how much do you blame yourself for that? And change how... And change how well, I've tried to bring trust back into British politics by trying to make things accountable. Um, and I think all the while you're part of the European Union, you're having pretty fake general elections where so much of oh, our the, life is not even decided by Westminster. All right. Um, will you refund the money would-be candidates have spent? We have an issue with that, and we must try and recompense people. I've got people out there. I've warned them, by the way. Well, will, you, re will you refund their money or not? Oh, Eddie, I warn them all face to face. That, that you might change your mind in a week. If, that if circumstances changed, I did this over the last three months, that if circumstances changed, you know, we may have a different situation. And I'm sorry for people that have put their time and their money the people who believed on the line. You. Uh, well, they still believe me, actually, and I have to tell you overwhelmingly. Do they? F your election over, strategy and F Boris, over, says Wayne Bradley. Over, well, that's one. I'll give you 200 others if you want to read those out, if you've got time on the show. I go on. You have. Overwelmingly. Oh, go on. People have... I tell you what, if I send them to you now on email, will you read them out? Oh, I, I thought you were time. going to read them out to me. Forgive me. Right. <laughs> no, I'm not, because we're going to um, hit the news. <laughs> how, much money, how much money have you raked in with these non-refundable £100? It's about £3,000, I think, isn't it? Uh, we had 3,000 people who applied to be candidates. Yes, that's yeah. right. Are you going to give them their money back? Of course not. We're a political party set up wow. to deliver a proper Brexit. We have reset the political agenda this year in the most astonishing way. Well, it you is know, astonishing, we isn't it? Last it, week you took their money, and last week you said they would stand for your party, and this week you <clears> changed <throat> your mind. Well, most of them said the money in six months ago, actually. Um, and the truth of it is, if we weren't here, Theresa May would still be Prime Minister. I'm talking about your accountability to the people who've given you money. Uh, people who've given me money believe that the Brexit Party is here to deliver Brexit, and that is what we're going to fight our damnedest to do. You said they would stand last week in, in, in the face of everyone saying <coughs> this was madness. You said, no, no, 600 candidates, unless yep. Boris Johnson backs down. He didn't back down. Yes, sir. Are you going to put your money... Well, this isn't. Well, you can't blame well, the I EU for this. Well, you can't blame what, Theresa May for what, this. Man. Why don't you well, open you your chequebook and refund I the money suggest. you've let down? I suggest you play to your listeners the short clips of what he said last night. I suggest you answer my question. Are you going to I, refund their money? His position changed last night very fundamentally. Are you going to bottle refunding their money as well? I'm not going to refund their money. They put their faith in me to do the Gosh. right thing. And the vast majority of them, the vast majority of them this afternoon, agree with what I've done. Are you a serious political party? Uh, we are a political party who, as I say... Are you a serious political weeks. party? <clears throat> well, we're pretty serious because we won a national election pretty within six weeks. But not a serious six political weeks. party. Well, if we're too serious, that would be horrible. Um, we're human are beings. Are you a joke political a party? party? No, we're a serious party right. that set up... And would you know what? We won a national election within six weeks. Yeah, you promised to publish your European election history. manifesto after the European elections. Where is it? We're, we're, manifesto? What a horrible word. You promised to publish your election manifesto <laughs> at the European elections after the election manifesto. was over. I Where is it? it? I will publish a contract with the British people, never a manifesto. That's a horrible, horrible word that equates to lie. Well, well. you're going to uh, pro uh, publish a, a contract for this general election, but you did yes. promise, you were asked by journalists before the European election, uh, when are you going to publish your European ele election manifesto? And you said after the elections. And I'm just asking you, where is it? That was a joke. After the elections was a joke. Yes. What we did do, though, was begin a debate 
on investment in the regions in this country. And I'm pleased that now both the Conservative and Labour Party are talking about that. We started off a debate about the lack of broadband connectivity, even mobile phone connectivity around the country, and the other parties are talking about that. And we did, in six remarkable weeks, change British politics. You changed British broadband. I would love to do it properly, because there are five and a half million people out there now acting as sole contractors, self-employed people, and they've got to be given an even break. Since you've had some candidates, you forced them to stand down, are you going to reconsider whether you're going to stand? Are you going to put your £100 where your mouth is? Thought about it, but we're still fighting in 300 seats, and if, and the thought of me being hunkered down as I was in 2015 with UKIP in one constituency, and not able to get out round the country spreading a national message. No, I know what the right thing to do is, and I'm doing it. Uh, you're not going to be in these TV debates now, are you? Um, I don't know how that's going to work, um, and that is that, of course, is an issue. Um, and there were many, of course, who said, oh, well, of course, the reason Nigel's doing this is always ego. He wants to be in the TV debates. And nothing could be further from the truth. Really? I want to make sure, I want to make sure that that vote of 2016 gets translated into action and we become an independent country free to make our own decisions.